Hi everybody. Just wanted to uh, let you know that I just received my Mason Bee Feeder. It's a bee house that I purchased from Costco and I just kind of wanted to do a little quick video on this. I uh, also purchased some bees, Mason Bees uh, online and they are here so perfect timing and I just wanted to uh, show you how it comes in the box and then I will also show you what it looks like once I take it out of the box and then we're gonna go ahead and hang it up as well so uh, just a quick video I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this and I'll be right back alright we're uh, back just kinda wanted to show you what it looks like I got it all out of the box and here is what it looks like and it's called native bee barn and you can see it's specifically designed for the mason bee and uh, I purchased this online from Costco.com and I had a five dollar off that they were offering uh, so after tax I think there was a couple dollars in tax uh, it came out to $30 and some change. So uh, I'd say it's a pretty nice bee house uh, for the money. So if you're looking to have mason bees for your backyard, uh, this would be a good buy. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you what the box looks like. It's probably about a 13 to 14 inches tall in the box and about 12 inches wide it's a pretty good size you can see it's got the little containers here where the the bees will go in there and uh, the female mason bee will uh, put its larvae or young in little individual compartments starting with the females first towards the back and then as she comes further out towards the front uh, you'll see the males uh, she'll usually put the male uh, larvae or young in a cocoon for the following year so the males hatch first and the males do not live very long a couple weeks and the sole purpose for the male is to breed with the female. Females will live about five to six weeks. So the males come out first, they're closer to here, and then the females are towards the back. And so you got these little straw looking things where she'll go inside and that's where she'll deposit her larvae in, in cocoons. Then we have a few slots here for butterflies. Um, so there's three slots there. And then in the center here are um, some more ways that the female can go through into this hole. And these come apart. So you take these apart in November or so, and then you can scrape out the larvae in the cocoons these come apart you just take a screwdriver and uh, collect your your pods or your cocoons and you can save them up and they will hatch the following spring so this is a great way to get your own bees your own native bees that will help pollinate your vegetables and any of your flowers and fruit trees. So I just wanted to make this short video. It's a pretty nice bee house. It's called the Native Bee Barn from Costco. And I paid just over $30 for it. So I'm gonna get this unpackaged and then I'll be back. Hi everybody, this is Kevin from Texas Yardman and More. I just wanted to show you my new mason beehive. I just recently installed it and I went ahead and just attached two of these one by twos 
onto my shed. This is attached to my shed. And this has been placed in the location where the morning sun will hit it. That's how the bees uh, like to uh, have their hive is in the uh, where the morning sun hits it uh, because they don't want to be in a hot area where they can overheat. So this is a perfect location later on in the day as the sun moves across the horizon. Uh, the other side of the shed is the hottest, so this will be shaded by my plum tree here. This is a methylene plum tree. And I uh, just wanted to show you, this is uh, the uh, Mason B house that I purchased online from Costco. And um, I actually am going to take it off and give you a close-up. But as you can see, it has some bamboo tubular uh, structures in here where the mason bee can go inside and the female will go all the way to the back of the tube and lay the female larvae first and then as she works her way through there that she'll put them in in little individual chambers and she'll use mud to seal up the chamber uh, along with a little bit of pollen for the larvae to eat on but she'll work her way out of the tube towards the end here and as she gets closer uh, towards the end of this tube she'll lay male eggs and the males are the ones that hatch first so these are bamboo tubular style uh, chambers that she uses and then in the center here I went ahead and there's two screws one on each side I took the screws out and that holds this little block of wood in here and you just go ahead and take that block of wood out and you can see that inside of there is this block and if you notice on the back side of this block there's a piece of cardboard and that is so the bee will not come out through the other side she'll just stop right there at the back side of this and then as you can see she'll work her way up this way with the larvae or the cocoons that she lays and she'll probably do anywhere from 8 to 12 but they're little cells and um, she'll use mud to make those cells that's why they call them mason bees but if you notice on here it comes with rubber bands these rubber bands come off and just make sure you take them apart the way they're supposed to keep the back side and these come apart so inside these grooves is where she'll lay the larvae or the cocoons and that will be next year's bees so by about November this will be uh, full and that's when we can go ahead and take the cocoons out and store them uh, we'll have to clean them, uh, make sure there's no mites or any kind of insects attached to them. We'll have to clean them in water and then we'll uh, dry them and store them in the refrigerator until next spring. But this is a great way of collecting your own uh, bee cocoons. And mason bees are much better than honey bees. They'll outperform a honey bee uh, for every one mason bee there's 80 honey bees that do the same amount of work so for a tree this size it will only take seven mason uh, bees to pollinate it whereas normally all right we're back i'm just going to go ahead and put this back together and you want to make sure that these holes line up so if you notice on the back side of here there is a hole a mounting hole that I went ahead and screwed in a screw to hang this from. And we're just going to go ahead and hang it up on here. And if you notice, we have enough room for actually two of these. So basically I had some 2 by 4s here and I just strung these across for a nice anchor. And later on I'm going to probably buy one more of these. But we'll just simply hang it up.
And you gotta make sure it's lined up. There we go. And you wanna make sure that it's straight. And there you have it. And so now we have some bees here. There, it comes in this tube. And you can see I bought them for Rocky Pond Mason Bees. And they're out of uh, Oregon. And it just says on here to release, remove the tab. And there's actually one right there already. He's coming out. Can you see him? There's a couple in there. So they're already active. And I actually purchased some uh, attractant for these, which I have not put out. There, he landed right here. See? And there's another one. And they've already found the house. And here's a third one. And the thing with these types of bees they're actually mistaken for flies. Uh, they look a lot like flies, but they aren't. They're a, they're a bee, and they're great pollinators. There he goes. He's flown away, and the other one went up on the top. Here comes another one. Then that one flew away. See if we can get some more to come out. And I'm actually going to pause the video right here because I'm going to go inside and get the attractant. We're going to put the attractant on here and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I went ahead and sprayed some of this attractant onto the front face of the beehive. Or the bee house I should say. Oh there's one. Are they coming back? I just saw two flying around here. Maybe they came back. Let's see if we can get some more of these guys to come out. Oh, there's one. He just flew off. Startled me there. The nice thing about these bees is they're not aggressive. Uh, they will not sting you. Uh, the males do not sting. The females will not sting you unless, of course, you pinch them or step on them or something like that. Then they'll, they'll sting you, but they're uh, non-aggressive bees. And uh, th that's the little uh, attractant here in this bottle. And there's another bee coming out. You can zoom in on it. She poked her head out and then went back in. But she probably smells the attractant. Uh, so about every two to three weeks you want to spray this on the front. And I ordered this uh, from the same place that I purchased the bees from. I'm going to go ahead and pop this open, if it'll let me. Sometimes they put that on there pretty tight. There's one right there. Just flew away. And the good thing about these bees is they will stay fairly close to this bee house. They'll stay within 300 feet, so they're great pollinators for your backyard, and they're great pollinators for your neighbors, uh, as long as it's within 300 feet of here. They don't go very far, whereas honeybees, they can go up to uh, five miles away from where they collect their 
pollen from and then they have to return back to their hive and then they come back so you can tell why mason bees are much more efficient is they have less to travel and they have a shorter duration let's see if we can get some more of these bees to come out And it may be that some of them, because they were in the refrigerator, they uh, are still kind of not as active, but I'm going to go ahead and here's another one. He's on my shirt. There he goes. Oh, I can see some activity in there. Here's another one coming out. Unlike the first two that came out, they they were uh, climbing around on the outside of the bee house. These just came out and flew away. So it's like, hopefully they smell the attractant. <laughs> 